My name's Eric Tucker. I live in Manville, Texas. I go to Manville High School. Play safety. This is my under the radar spotlight. Let's get it. Let's come out on fire and don't stop. Let's take it to the next level. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Reggie from HBCU Spotlight, and I'm back with another banger. As you can see, 92% of the channel's viewers are not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you will be alerted anytime that I upload a video. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is the story of yet another trailblazer who is out to bring black colleges back to prominence. This is the story of Derek Mr. Tucker. Tucker is a six foot one, 200 pound safety from Manville, Texas, where he attended Manville High School. He was a four star recruit in the class of 2017. Coming out of high school, he was ranked as the 19 best safety in the country. He played on varsity for three years at Manville. In that time, he played all over the field. His versatility resulted in 152 tackles, two forced fumbles, six fumble recoveries, and get this 11 interceptions. And that was just what he did on defense. On the offensive and special team side of the ball, he had 385 all-purpose yards and four touchdowns. But looking at those stats, it's safe to say that he was a hard-hitting ball hawk. Basically, the prototypical safety. As expected, his production on the field had schools doing whatever they could to get Tucker to come to their schools. He had a total of 15 scholarship offers. Those schools were Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, Houston, 
Ole Miss, TCU, Texas, USC, and UCLA, just to name a few. Experts were convinced that Tucker was going to commit to Texas. He attended several camps at the school. On May 13, 2016, Tucker shocked everyone by choosing to play in SEC and attend Texas A&M. In his three years at A&M, he had 84 tackles, five passes deflected, one forced fumble, one touchdown, and one interception. Most of that production came during his freshman year. The highlight of his time at A&M came in his freshman year when he was named the Defensive Player of the Week. In that game, he had 14 tackles, two passes deflected, one forced fumble, and a pick six that gave the Aggies the lead. It's clear to see that he has the ability to excel when given the opportunity. He then saw action in 10 games as a sophomore under the new staff in 2018, before falling on the depth chart a bit. From the surface perspective, you would think that Tucker decided to leave because his production on the field wasn't what he expected coming in as such a highly talented player, but that's not the case. I follow college football and recruiting very heavily. I noticed a large number of Texas A&M players decided to enter the transfer portal, but I didn't know why. After a bit of research, I found my answer. It was in part due to the extreme racism that minority students have been subjected to at the institution. Before you get mad at me, check this out. Texas A&M student body is 65% white, 22% Hispanic, and just 3% black, with a large number of that 3% attending the institution just for sports. If you still don't believe me, check this out. Check yourself, you want to feel equal if you had another statue of a black person. No, I got it like you. So why isn't it the same all the way around? You're a student. I'm not talking to you. You're an Aggie? I'm not talking or to you. Are you a black? I'm not talking to you. Let me. Let me. Let me. What? Let me go to school. No, 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 no. Say that one more time. The A&M student at the center of a racially charged viral video is issuing an apology tonight. This after the university announced plans to hold him and others that are in that video accountable for what they did and said. News 3's Whitney Miller explains. I was horrified. I could not even really get through most of the video. Morgan Gimblet, a student at Texas A&M, was shocked to find a video filled with racial slurs had surfaced on social media over the weekend. A bunch of people were very up in arms and very disgusted by this. The 37 second recording shows at least three white students at a chalkboard describing a diagram about race using the N word. An A&M student has heard repeating variations of the word as he's describing children of mixed races. a and calls the behavior abhorrent. Monday, University President Michael K. Young said this incident will be investigated through the Student Conduct Office. While outcomes are protected by FERPA and cannot be made public, those found responsible will be held accountable. The student who also said quote, they're everywhere, when referring to the N-word, issued this written apology. I am extremely sorry from the bottom of my heart, as this is not who I was raised to be and not who I want to be. I cannot begin to understand, but will work to be more aware of the pain these words cause people. I am deeply sorry. Clemson coach Davo Sweeney on Monday defended his response to an assistant coach's use of a racial slur during a practice three years ago. Nearly a week after assistant coach Danny Pierman apologized for using the slur, Sweeney made his first public comments about what happened in a taped message he posted to the team's website. Please take a listen. I would fire a coach immediately if he called a player an N-word. No questions asked. That did not happen. Another college football story that we need to share, and that is about Clemson assistant coach Danny Pierman, who acknowledges using a racial slur in a 2017 practice. What happened was we had, I didn't know anything about it. Coach and I met to discuss the incident, and he reiterated that my language was unacceptable. DJ, you know, just kind of, you know, said something he, he, he probably shouldn't have said. Sweeney demands accountability from his players, but where is it when a coach does something to those players? Coach Pierman you know, thought he was saying it to him and he's mad and he reacted and, and he basically, in correcting him, repeated the, set, the, the phrase. Where is Dabo Sweeney in all this? And so again, I didn't know anything about it. He dismissed the idea of racism by noting, among other things, that there are black quarterbacks. And uh, uh, we moved on. He is either unwilling or incapable of considering race. Clemson head football coach Dabo Sweeney continues to show his ass when it pertains to anything outside of a box score. You see, when Colin Kaepernick took a knee, 
to protest systemic racism and police brutality in the United States of America, Dabo took it upon himself to quell the discussion. But I don't, I don't think it's good uh, to be a distraction to your team. I don't think it's good to use the team uh, as, as the platform. I wonder how big of a distraction he feels protests around the country are at this moment, or how the police must end the distraction. Nobody's really asked me about uh, Kaepernick or whatever. I just think there's a right way to do things. And uh, I think that it just creates more divisiveness, more division. I think there's a better way. There's a pattern here that we will outline in this clip. Unfortunately, former Clemson running back Hamada Williams alleges worse. We played music every day before practice for obvious reasons. Mike Reed, new prospective cornerback coach, came to visit and he toured our locker room. While we were listening to music, Dabo walked into the meeting room and said, I don't want to walk in the locker room with guests less future coaches hearing N-word, this, N-word, that, in our house. If true, it's eerily similar to Bill Peters, the former Calgary Flames head coach who told former player Akeem Aliyu, a black player, hey Akeem, I'm sick of you playing that N-word, S-word. I'm sick of hearing this N-word, F-word, other N-word in the ass stuff. You see, there's a reason Head football coaches like Will Muschamp, Mark Stoops, Jeremy Pruitt are marching. And why Dabo Sweeney, the tone-deaf Clemson football coach, rocked a Football Matters t-shirt. However, ESPN's Mark Jones tweeted, Dabo is failing his black players on police brutality and racism. Facts. When the Clemson football Twitter account was on the timeline, former wideout Canyon Tuttle outed a former coach using the N-word in practice under Sweeney's watch with zero repercussions. Stop protecting your brand. Take a stand, he told Dabo. And guess what? It was true. Assistant coach Danny Pierman apologized for it. Tuttle also noted Sweeney discouraged Clemson players from participating in an on-campus sit-in to protest racism in April 2016 at a protest in Greenville. Former Clemson football player Shaquille Anthony said, I'm disappointed in Coach Dabo. I can't speak on why he hasn't said more. Pair this with, in Dabo's own words, as far as paying players professionalizing college athletics, that's where you lose me. I'll go do something else because there's enough entitlement in this world as it is. Plus, when visiting 45's house, some players only attended because they worried that refusing to attend the traditional White House visit might affect their scholarships or playing time. That's the culture Dabo brings. In addition to, only after public pressure, backed out of a fundraiser for the Palmetto Family Council, a conservative advocacy group that opposes same-sex marriage and abortion. That's Dabo Sweeney. You see, at Clemson, accountability is tough. A building on campus remains named Benjamin Tillman a vocal white supremacist who reigned as South Carolina's governor and represented the state and the Senate for 23 years. He also helped orchestrate the assassination of a black senator in 1876. As one Reddit user astutely pointed out, I am shocked, shocked, I tell you, that a sport that profits largely off the talent of young black men, raking in millions while those same young men are hastily ushered through haphazard education and denied the chance to profit from their own talent, is facing a reckoning with racial equality. Here's what they think about you. 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 As you can see, A&M is not the only school with this problem. Some people think that these athletes should just dribble the ball or score a touchdown and just be quiet, despite all the social injustices that are going on. That is why athletes such as Muhammad Ali, Deontay Wilder, and LeBron James are such polarizing figures. They use their platform to speak on topics plaguing the black community. With that being said, Tucker entered the transfer portal on April 28th, 2021. He did so on the same day as veteran wide receiver Cameron Buckley, who has since announced his transfer to Indiana. Incoming freshman wide receiver Shadrach Banks, who enrolled a semester early, also entered the portal after spring ball without spending a season on campus. He has since signed with TCU and will make the move to linebacker with the Horned Frogs. Redshirt freshman linebacker Keyshawn Brown also entered the portal following the spring but has not announced his destination yet. The same is true with defensive back 
Trayvon Fuller, who was a senior this past season, but entered the transfer portal in case he wants to continue his career. Texas A&M also had a few players transfer prior to the spring as well. Redshirt freshman receivers Cam Brown and Dylan Wright transferred to UCLA and Minnesota respectively. Quarterback James Foster, who had opted out of the season, is now at Charlotte. Defensive end Jeremiah Martin is now at Washington. On June 1st, 2021, Tucker shocked everyone and committed to play for Tennessee State. He will be a grad transfer. He earned his degree from Texas A&M and will have two years of eligibility left. Time will only tell if Coach Eddie George and his staff will have the same effect as Coach Prime is having at Jackson State. But landing a once four-star recruit from the best conference in college football is an enormous step in the right direction, especially for a program that finished with a 2-5 record in the spring. Thanks for watching the video. If you made it to the end, type in Big Rambo in the comments section. I want to hear from all of you in the comments. I'm open to all feedback. Also, how do you think Coach Eddie George will do in his first season as a head coach? Let's keep growing and supporting the historically black colleges that we all love. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe, leave a like, and a comment. We're on the road to 10K. From us, over here at HBCU Spotlight, rooting for your Tucker, and looking forward to seeing you shine on the field. We out of here. Peace.